we're still in search of, I guess, benefits, and you talked about some of the industries that are built on GMOs. Describe the, the golden rice experiment, and that was supposed to be another example of what can be done by altering the genes of food. Right, so golden rice uh, was this idea that there are many, uh, especially children in the developing world, that eat diets that are reasonably high in calories. They're a rice-based uh, diet, but they don't get a lot of nutrition through rice. So if these, these are cultures where kids are not getting enough beta carotene, which can lead them to have go, go blind when they're quite young or even die when they're quite young. So there have been all kinds of strategies to try to fix the vitamin A deficiency in some developing countries. Some people said what you need to do is have public health workers go out and pop a vitamin A pill in everybody's mouth. Uh, you know, you can have these public health campaigns, get them to eat more orange food. And you know, someone came up with a great idea that we'll, what we'll do is we'll genetically modify what they're eating already and stick a gene in there which will contribute uh, you know, a beta carotene profile to the rice so that you don't have to go out and eat a carrot. You can just eat rice and still get the beta carotene which will help you create vitamin A. Seemed like a great idea and Time Magazine came out with this big front page you know, cover story about how it's going to save millions of kids. Um, which was very, the reason this became such a big deal is because it was a pro-GMO story. This was a genetically modified crop. And all these companies that have been getting such bad press for so long jumped on this and said, see, GMOs can save the world. These companies were not making golden rice. They were still pushing corn and soybeans, but they latched onto this as this great kind of, uh, you know, public face of the GMO thing. What was funny about the way it turned out is a lot of the countries where this stuff was being promoted wouldn't buy it. And there are all kinds of reasons they wouldn't buy it. One reason they wouldn't buy it is they heard it was GMO and somehow in their head, GMO equals Monsanto, Monsanto equals kind of colonial, you know, takeover of the food system. They didn't want that, even though it wasn't Monsanto. But there were other even more weird and subtle kinds of things, which is that when they designed this rice, uh, it turns out that people eat rice for lots of different reasons, some of them nutrition and some of them cultural. So for example, there are countries where they like white rice, not brown rice, and certainly not orange rice. So you create a rice grain that is orange and people aren't going to eat it, even if you tell them it's good for them. Other places, they eat short grain, not long grain, or they eat long grain and not short grain. So you ask somebody to eat an orange short grain rice, they say, we don't eat short grain rice, doesn't matter if it's good for me, doesn't matter if it's orange, I don't care, I'm not going to eat it. So like, they fixed the scientific problem, but they didn't fix the cultural problem. So this just shows you, uh, this is what I think is so interesting, that, that eating is such a very rich and complicated cultural phenomenon that's not simply about genes, it's about everything.